In this video, I'll demonstrate how to download MySQL and MySQL Workbench, which are the two products we're going to use for this course. Uh, to begin with, open up a browser. I'm using Chrome and just search for MySQL Download. When you do that, hopefully at the, your top um, search result will be this link off the MySQL website. We'll just click at the beginning, MySQL Downloads. And there's a couple different versions. There's an Enterprise Edition, and then what we want down here is the Community Edition. That's the free open source version. And then there's all these different components. We don't want them all. We're just going to want the Community Server. So we'll click on that. And then at this point, you can do it a couple different ways. You can download these zip archives and open them up and look for certain files. Or the much easier way is to just use the MSI installer. So we will download that, which actually takes us to this screen because there's two versions of the installer. One is very small. It just downloads the installer, and then when you execute it, it runs out to the web and downloads the files it needs. Or you can download this one, which already has all the files. That's why it's much larger. I always just go for the small one. Download it. Uh, when you click on that, it comes to this screen, which asks, do you want to sign up for an Oracle web account? But you don't have to. You can just say, no, start my download. So we'll click that. And then hopefully it'll download the installer real quick. And then we'll click on that. So you're depending on your operating system, which by the way, I'm using uh, Windows 10. I have that loaded. So it's asking for permissions to, to do these things. And then it says, well, there's an upgrade available for the installer. So yeah, go ahead and get the upgrade. And it's finally coming. So the first thing it's asking as part of this uh, installer is do you accept the license terms? So I'm gonna hit yes and go next. And then we're going to choose a setup type. We're actually going to go custom. It's just the default setup type, which is, it's okay to do that. It just installs a lot of things we don't need. And so rather than do that, I'm going to go custom and just install the things I want. So we'll hit next. So the two things we want are the actual SQL Server. That's the database management system. That's the part that's going to um, manage all of our databases where we'll create tables and create databases. But now you need to know if you're running a 64-bit or 32-bit operating system. So let me show you how to figure that out. Now there's a couple ways of doing this. I think if you're on uh, Windows 7 or 8, you might be able to click on this and there used to be the computer here. Right click and if there's a properties or maybe you can go to manage. Um, also, you can just basically you're going to find system properties. So um, I can just go system here, system information, and if you scroll through here, system type I'm on 64. Another way I know I can do it on uh, Windows 10 is if I run over here and on where is it at? Um, this PC I can right click and go properties, and it'll come up and say 64. Uh, system type 64 bit. Hopefully you can figure that out if you have a different system. You may have to Google it, but you need to figure that out because in our next step we want to choose a SQL Server and we need to choose the appropriate one. So I'll go 64 bit and then the application that we want is Workbench because that's going to be our interface to uh, MySQL. You may hear me say SQL Server a lot. I mean MySQL. So we're going to click on that um, maybe we'll grab some documentation. Let me scoot over. I'll go ahead and throw that over. And that should be good enough. That's all we're going to need are those three components. So I'm going to hit next. It says, all right, we're ready to get those things and we'll hit execute. So it's going to take a few minutes to download and install. I'll pause the video and when it's done, we'll come back. Okay, everything's downloaded, installed. I have three completes. We'll hit next and move into product configuration. It mentions here's the product you need to configure. We'll hit next. And we'll just accept all the default values on the type and the networking. And accounts and roles. It basically wants you to set up a password for the root. Um, the root account is the, the default account. 
And so it's a good idea. To, um, to, well, in fact, you're required to put in a password. I am going to make mine weak, admittedly. It's not very long because um, I'm not connected to the web. We're not storing anything important. So I'm just doing a real weak password. But it's a little quicker to, to log in every time I need to log in. Uh, we're not going to add any users for this course. We'll just constantly use our root account, right? We're just playing, learning how to create SQL or use SQL to create databases and tables and install and query data. So we'll just stick with the root account. Towards the end of the course, we'll actually create users and give them permission. So we'll hit next. And now it's asking, do we want to make this a Windows service? And um, yes, it's just going to be a service. And what we're talking about is MySQL will run in the background and it will run at startup. It will always be there. So when we open up MySQL Workbench, we can just connect to an already running MySQL. And we're going to use a standard system account. So we'll hit next. And now finally it's going to execute and make sure it can do all of these things. It's going to configure our setup. All right, it looks like everything went okay here. And now we'll hit finish. Well, product configuration complete, we we'll next. And installation complete, start my SQL Workbench. Yes, hit finish. And my SQL Workbench opens up. When we double click on the root, it will connect. Of course, it's gonna ask for that password. Oh, it didn't. Hmm, not sure why it didn't ask for a password, but it may on your instance. Anyway, now we have MySQL Workbench open and an actual database. I'll show you one more thing and then we'll be done with this video. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. But basically, you can see SQL Server running as an instance. Again, in 10, I can just click on Services here. Open that. And here are a list of all the services running on this computer. And if I scroll down, uh, whoops, too far down, there's my SQL. It's running and it's automatically going to start up. Startup type is automatic. So that will always be running in the background. And now I can use my SQL Workbench to connect to that right there. I have, happen to have a query window already open. But anyway, so that's it. I should mention on Windows 7 and I believe Windows 8, um, you can right click on that My Computer and there will be a Manage. There's a Properties and a Manage. And when you do that, it will um, open up a system window that we talked about before. Whoop, not system. Let me do that again, Manage. Actually, you want Computer Management. And one of the things you'll see here is services and applications. And there's your services. So this is a, another way to get to it. And again, if you scroll down far enough, but not too far, you'll see MySQL up and running.